Well, there appears to be some uproar of the latest issue of Photo District News that arrived in my mailbox earlier this week. Apparently, the U.S. Postal Service has delivered others before mine finally arrived. The fury stems from an ad with the tagline, quote, Join the fight against overpriced images, end quote, which is purportedly akin to Modern Postcard's promotional campaign, according to some. That includes the tagline, quote, Skip the expensive photo shoot, and which I wrote about back in August. I just don't see the comparison to Modern Postcard as an apples-to-apples comparison. When I see PDN write articles talking about how great RF and Microstock is and how everyone should jump on the bandwagon and sell out, well, then I'll be upset with PDN. According to their pricing structure, you get paid in credits, not actual accrued dollars. Why credits? Well, lawfully, it's easier to take credits away from you after 365 days, as they say they will, if you don't use them, instead of actual currency. Further, you have to give up sales or credits if you want to get paid out under 50 credits to PayPal. In the past, Photo Plus has had schmucks like On Request and Digital Vision with Booth Space. Does that mean we boycott that too? I think not. I've been every year for over a decade, closing on 15 years, I think, and each year I take away enough that it was well worth my being there. Photolia can spend all they want on ads. It's not going to change the quality of the work they peddle or the interest they gin up or lack thereof. This past weekend, I was at the White House News Photographer's day-long multimedia program, and near the end of the day, on the panel discussion, several photographers were asking about getting the quote-unquote important stories told. Now, these were the bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, young, eager, altruistic photographers, and they believe they all have to do, all they have to do is propose an amazing story, and if they do it right, if they talk just just to the right person, why anyone would be a fool not to herald the news from the treetops. The panel summarily crushed these thoughts. The message essentially was, news is business. If your story doesn't sell more papers, more ads, more eyeballs on web pages, it's not going to get accepted by these outlets, period. The news is business mentality isn't new. It's just more obvious these days. There are essentially just a few things you can do to get these vital stories out, and feel free to check the actual story on the blog for more details on that. I further submit that the news outlets have an obligation to the community that say they apply the ad-driven eyeball counting methodology to 8 out of 10 stories that are driven by what the marketplace wants with a revenue cushion that covers the cost of the remaining 2 out of 10 that are driven by a what the public should see approach where the outlets are motivated by doing good rather than making profits. This model is evident for Bank of America for example in their loans division. I've done work for them before and they have a separate division called the Community Development Corporation where they make loans and work to develop communities in areas that are more strict profit-centric loan divisions would just not touch. In the end, if you want the story told bad enough, it will get told, come hell or high water. But at what sacrifice? That's your call. You are, in, the, in this enlightened age, empowered with the tools and potential audience to make a difference. The only question is, how far will you go? The mystery photo editor over at the A Photo Editor blog writes in his article, Who is this Dan Winters fellow, about the challenges of Superior's colleagues being enamored with Dan Winters' work. Quote, He loves a photograph he once saw, not that he will love the photograph he's about to get. Could a photo director's job get any easier than giving Dan an assignment? Right up to the point where you're told to give him art direction. End quote. Ah, this message is clear. Just because you are a phenomenal photographer with a great style doesn't mean clients will want to work with you. And if you make it worse, you make it so that you can't take direction. This is a recipe for a lot of one-off clients with little repeat business. Folks, we are in the business of making pictures. Pictures people want, pictures people need. And those they want and need are the ones that actually fit into a story or a mocked up layout for an ad. If you want to try something edgy, fill the request and then Shoot something that's yours, something different, and offer it up. In this way, the client has what they need, and if they like your second image, they might go to bat for it. Placing a client in a position where they have to take what you've given them, and only that, places them in an uncomfortable position against deadline or, or, again, or additional cost for a reshoot. Apply instead the one for the, one for me approach. We are also in the business of taking direction. Sometimes it's vague, sometimes overly specific. To presume that you would deign to take direction, or worse yet, you consider direction something to work opposite of, ensures that you will get a reputation for being difficult to work with, or for people to only work with you when their superiors press for it. I can't know how Dan Winters works. 
he may well be a fine and responsive photographer. The mystery photo editor may just be miffed at Dan for other reasons, who knows. But the overarching point is, you have to be easy to work with and deliver what the client wants.